Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome to another early game playbook guide video. And today we'll be covering the bandit queen Zheng Jiang. So Zheng Jiang is the only female leader in the game. She is also the most fictional character in the game. In that in the Three Kingdom period, there were references to female bandits in the area, but they mainly refer to two people, uh, one with the surname of Zheng and one with the surname of Jiang. And to make her character a bit simplified, uh, the developers kind of conjoined them together to form this uh, fictional female bandit character. But it also gives her the most freedom uh, to express herself in the game because she's not restricted by history. So we have our only female leader, the bandit queen Zheng Jiang. Her starting situation is very hard and her character specialization is a champion, which makes her very strong in dueling. Uh, her other bonuses based on her background being a bandit queen is minus one turn mustering and 50% tribute in diplomacy. The tribute in diplomacy is a unique uh, effect for Zheng Jiang's faction. Basically, you can negotiate diplomatic deals that are very similar to vassal payments where because you are a very strong bandit faction, you can scare other faction into paying you tributes, sort of like uh, uh, vassal payments, but they're not going to be your vassals. Uh, these payments are like vassal payments and trade agreement. They're not affected by your corruption, and they can be uh, increased through a multiplier like the one shown here, where she will get automatically 50% extra tribute payments. So speaking of Zheng Jiang's faction, we do have a unique faction resource called Infamy. Infamy is quite complex and there are multiple tiers. We'll talk more about this once we get into the game, once we see the Infamy bar. But generally, it increases your prestige, increases character experience, increases character satisfaction and morale, and at higher tiers, it will decay over time. So it forces you to uh, be stay aggressive because the way to get Infamy is to win fights or conquer new settlements. It's very similar to Sun Jian's playstyle, where you are encouraged to constantly fight, but the way Infamy decays, it's a little different from the way that Heroism decays for Sun Jian. So you don't have to stay hyper aggressive because there are a few tiers early on where you don't have any decay at all. Now, other unique features are the two units shown here, the Hidden Axes and the Fist of the Bandit Queen. Now the Fist of the Bandit Queen is just upgraded version of the Hidden Axis, so let's just talk about what this unit does. This unit is an uh, axe unit with no shield, uh, it has very high charge damage but very poor defense against arrows and cavalry. But what really makes this unit unique is it has two special traits. It has Snipe and Stalk. So Snipe uh, allow you to fire and stay hidden. So this unit also carries a bow, so it's a dual weapon unit similar to Azor Dragons where you either can have dual hold uh, axes in melee combat or you can have a bow that fires uh, in range combat. Uh, and because it has stability snipe, it can stay hidden and shoot at the same time. So you could have free shots on enemy range units uh, that match your range or even have farther range than you, you're able to sneak up to them and fire off your arrows uh, while staying hidden. Uh, Stock, the other ability that this unit has, allows it to stay hidden even on the move and stay hidden from things like arrow towers. You'll only be seen uh, once you are up close to enemy unit. So you can stay invisible even if you're on open terrain, you don't have to stay hidden in forest. So this makes this unit quite unique and very much like uh, ninjas from Shogun 2. Uh, but they play in a, like a bandit, sneaky bandit role where you can sneak up to settlements and win fights uh, just by simply sneaking into the settlement themselves, take control of all of the arrow towers. Uh, makes this unit very interesting to play around with in the battlefield. She also has two unique buildings, the bandit lair, which is additional agricultural building. This building decreases the income in the commandery by a set percentage while giving faction-wide replenishment. Uh, it's quite nice uh, to be placed in certain commanderies that are 
very what I call poor commanderies or the worst commanderies in the game. Uh, there is going to be a guide on that very soon as well. I'm currently working on it. Basically, you have a bunch of commanderies, especially in the north and northwest area, the map where Zhengjiang starts out at, where you just have a simple farmland and you don't have any other access to any specialty county that produces income. So in those commanderies, it's okay to sacrifice their income by decreasing um, the income through a bandit layer and to increase your replenishment everywhere else. So this is kind of a mid-game building to be built in certain uh, commanderies where it's not going to really impact your income, where you're mainly focused on food production. That way you can add another utility building into those commandery builds. Additionally, you have administrative office replacement building in the tribute hall. This building only does one thing. It increases more income from tributes, which we talked about earlier over here. So this is another building that can boost the percentage income you receive from tribute. Quite similar to Kornel's playstyle, where you want to focus on trade monopoly and get as much percentage multiplier of trade influence as you can. For Zhengjiang, once you get your faction started rolling and you can force other factions to pay you tributes, you could start building these buildings to increase your multiplier from your tribute payment, which will supply you much more income than you would get normally from just commandery tax payment. So aside from these buildings and units, we don't really have any noteworthy characters. We do start out with Lu Zheng and uh, Chong Qian. So these are just random characters that the game also made up uh, because this faction, unlike most factions in the game, as I said, is very fictional. Uh, they made uh, Lu Zheng as the second in command, uh, kind of playing the role of the dual female bandits uh, that kind of uh, give rise uh, to our character over here. So with that said, uh, we, let's jump into the game here. We're going to be playing on Legendary, Legendary with 40 minute battle timer as always. And let's go. Alrighty, we loaded up into the game. So we start out with a very similar mission of attacking the unit in front of us. Uh, this has been changed a little bit since the last patch where Xun Yu used to be the one who dies here all the time. Now they put Cai Yong here, which is quite nice. Uh, they give Xun Yu more of a role in the game. And if we take a look at the map in the beginning, we start out without territory, very similar to the way Liu Bei starts out. And we don't have a very strong army, we have a decent army. We're given a hidden axe. These are the level 3 rank units, uh, the level 6 ranks uh, Fist of the Bandit Queen. We don't get that in the beginning, which is kind of a shame. But we do get one unit of uh, hidden axe in the beginning. We're going to keep this unit uh, going forward because it's going to be very, very useful in a lot of the fights. Uh, we're going to fight this one right here. Now, it's okay to delegate the fight, but for this fight in particular and the next one, it's actually more beneficial for you to uh, fight it on the battlefield. They're very, very simple fights, and you can minimize your casualty and also dump all the experience onto Zhengjiang. So let's go. All right, we're loaded up into the battle. Uh, we're fighting this just to showcase a couple points. One, this is the hidden axe. Uh, as you can see here, it has stock, which means it can move while hidden in any terrain. It has snipe, which means it can remain hidden while firing. And it has guerrilla deployment. This is from Zhengjiang's uh, skills. And it also causes scares. Uh, scare. So what we can do is actually, we can put the unit, like say here. Normally we'll be in their range, uh, but they can't see us. So we can technically stay here and get free shot on them all we want. At the beginning, we're also going to play Zhengjiang right here as well. Uh, we're just going to have her rush these units because these are archers and on hard difficulty or maybe very hard difficulty and above. Uh, range units don't fire generals as long as you have other units on the map. Uh, just because the game programs them to think that it's inefficient. We're going to hide the rest in the army over here because we don't really want them to get much of the experience. And we can just kick things off like so. And charge at the enemy units uh, as you can see this unit is just gonna be firing they can't see him even though he's in, in the open so yeah it's a really a free attack but they don't have that many uh, rounds because of the low cunning stat on Zhengjiang but you can have a hidden axe on any unit so if you can place them on uh, actually let's chase them down if you can place them on the high cunning unit like a strategist, 
then you can definitely get them to have more ammo on them or boost them with burn trait. So now we want to kill the other group. Basically, they can't fight back in this entire fight. Uh, the strategist is not good at attacking you. He's debuffing your armor, but there is no enemy that can actually fight you. So it's basically a free fight. Uh, you don't even have to give uh, these units any experience. They killed 16 men. You could technically have her kill all 241 men on the map by herself to get the most experience. Uh, it's a very, very simple fight. Uh, she also has a legendary weapon, the Red Sister. Uh, so it does a lot of damage. It's a fast melee attack rate weapon. Uh, and you've noticed it said it was um, fatigue immunity. So that's very key. Alright, we killed everyone on the field. And like I said, uh, we can play look at the items. And I also forgot to look at Anzuri items as well. And we gained infamy. So as we mentioned, uh, we can gain infamy from battles and from conquering new settlements. So we just want some more income here. It's not much. And we completed this mission and we get a new mission to conquer Taiyuan, the town right here. And we got some experience. Now normally town fights are very difficult because of the number of arrow towers within towns. But because we have hidden axe, it's actually super easy to fight. Now let's take a moment to look at the ancillary item we started out with. Okay, we got a eunuch. This is not a good item, but we can definitely trade it. Uh, it's a bronze item, so it's actually worth quite a bit. Uh, Book of Mountain and Sea plus 10 campaign movement range. That's quite nice. Let's pop these items on. Probably should have done this before the fight. Uh, so the extra cunning should help out a little bit uh, with the ammo situation. And we can also we gonna ignore the unix there's too much debuff on this we can't afford another 10 satisfaction loss uh we do always start out with the clay warrior this is the free item for jung Jiang's faction and if we take a quick look at jung Jiang's item she has unique armor with really no special bonuses just some extra stats but her unique weapon is the best one in the game uh, not that it's like the best damage item but it gives you fatigue immunity so fatigue immunity basically means we can run her around the map all day long. She'll never get tired. She'll always run at full speed. And all, that's basically what makes it great. Uh, it gives you potential to kite. It's what separate Tiang cavalry from every other cavalry in the game. So this is an awesome weapon to have uh, that you start out with, which is great. And if you're playing as any other faction of the game, if you're able to acquire the Red Sisters, definitely do so because it make a big difference on your character once you equip them with fatigue immunity. Now, if she had a trait that grants her unbreakable, uh, unbreakable plus immune fa uh, fatigue immunity is basically auto win on all defensive fights because you're able to kite the enemy around the whole map forever as long as you have a timer limit. Um, other than that, there's not much to uh, mention about her. She's quite young. She's unmarried, which makes her potential for finding a good husband uh, in the game. But it's hard to convince uh, most characters to, let's say Zhang Yan, right? He owns the faction. So if you want him to marry your faction, you pretty much end his faction. And the AIs just won't do that. Uh, but you can definitely use her as bait to hunt down some other generals, uh, perhaps Lu Bu uh, from Dong Zhuo's faction. There are many play styles that focus on going south first to try to work out a peace deal with Dong Zhuo so you can potentially try to marry Liu Bu into your faction using your leader as the wife bait there. Uh, but I tend to prefer to uh, go north. I think the best way to play Zhang Jiang is to have a full reset after we wipe out Zhang Yan first. Uh, because the way the two bandits work, they both reside in the Black Mountain and they share kind of the same territory. And in our Zhang Yan uh, Let's Play, we kind of were able to hold up here in the corner for a long time uh, to kind of have a delayed start. That's actually really favorable on Legendary when you start out kind of behind uh, the AI and you have to catch up. So I think the best way to play this is to go attack North right away to wipe out Zhang Yan. Because if you look around you, you have Han territory surrounding you. So it's kind of a nice buffer. If you start out by expanding down south, what happens is you'll be facing Dong Zhuo's army very early on in the game. Not that they're hard to beat, but it will leave you exposed on two sides because your early game in, uh, initial dilemma is how to deal with Zhang Yan as a faction. 
you can either fight him right away or try to delay it with a little uh, gift. Uh, but what will happen is that even if you delay the gift um, with Zhang Yan, he will still betray you eventually. So it's hard to have a delay start from where you are in Taiyuan. It's much better to rush down Zhang Yan right away in the game and continue from there as the only bandit in the mountain. Uh, so it's saying in Chinese, you know, one mountain can't have two tigers. So we're going to be the one that wins and take over. So now that we have given ourselves the items, let's continue to attack Taiyuan Town. Uh, this fight is a little bit more interesting because um, we're fighting in a map with a lot of arrow towers. So I'm going to show you guys how to get in for free and crush this army with minimum casualty. I think you could technically do this with no casualty, uh, but uh, requires a lot more microing. I don't know if I can pull it off every time. So I'll try my best and we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, we loaded up into the battle here and as you can see there are tons of arrow towers inside the settlement. Now the, because this is a town, the capture point inside does not win you the battle. As you can see here, it provides a morale bonus. So whoever captures the flag, let's say we capture it, it will drop every defender's morale by 10 points. It's helpful, but it's probably not necessary to win this fight. What we want to do uh, to minimize casualty and to get in without suffering the wrath of these arrow towers is to split up our army. So first of all, uh, these, this army right here will be bait. This group right here will be bait. Their job is to let the enemy see them so the enemy will deploy around these two gates right here. Now, if they deploy around there, we have to hide these two units. Zheng Jiang is the one who needs to stay hidden because she can't uh, have the ability to stalk. Basically, she can't be uh, hidden in normal open terrain. So we just find a nice forest on the other side of the map to put her in. And this unit right here, the Hidden Axe, uh, has free reign. So he can actually go all the way up to here in guerrilla deployment and no one will see him. The towers won't recognize him and he will be able to grab all these towers for free. So let's start battle. So at this point, the enemy only sees this group right here on the map. So they're stationed around the gate right here. Now, because they're small size, they're not going to come out to try to fight us, which is good. We're going to be capturing basically every single point on the other side of the map while they're busy staring down at our enemy our army over here. And then we're going to have Zheng Jiang come inside to kill off the range units and then have the general come back in to rush down the enemy forces as well to help us take over. Now, the key here, as you can see, this is free. You can grab this. No one's going to be firing at you. The only thing you can't do is don't go inside. Not because they can see you once you're inside, but because you see these civilians that walk around, they will fight you uh, once you meet into contact with them. And the second you fight, you expose yourself. You're no longer invisible. So to capture all these points, you want to just round out the settlement from the outside and you'll be capturing all of them for free. And then when the time comes, once you have enough of these uh, settlements captured and you feel comf uh, comfortable um, marching Zheng Jiang in to start fighting some of these units, then you just simply run her out. Now this one's difficult to capture because like I said, we can't have our units uh, exposed. So what's going to happen here is that we're just going to be shifting this guy over to manipulate wherever this unit is. Right now, we're very happy with the way they're placed. Like, we can probably shift them a little bit over here. That way, we can shift their army to this gate. So, it buys us a little bit more coverage when we go to this side. Alright. So, so far, so good. Going super smooth. We're just grabbing these gates. It's a slow effort, but so we can come out now. We can let them see us because they're starting to sense. The AI has a very keen sense of our invisible unit, if you know what I mean. They just happen to know where your invisible unit actually are. 
So because the way the archer has placed himself, we can actually run in here, away from the arrow tower, and start killing them off. So we have we don't have to rush taking this one. Doesn't actually give us any benefits. It, we want the archers to scatter across the map because now we can kill them for free. See, they're trying to pull Z militia over here to help, but it's too late. We're gonna feast on them. All right, the arrow tower is gonna. Oh, okay. The arrow tower is not hitting us. What's hitting us is the civilians on the map. All right. We don't want to rush this. We want to wait till they're out of arrow range again and we can go after them afterward now they're gonna start clamping inside which is fine we just have to come and steal these arrow towers see we can literally stand here and steal this one and none of these will shoot at us but once we come into contact with these civilians then they will start shooting at us which is really really problematic but maybe we can sneak one in I'm gonna try it I'm going to hope the civilian doesn't bump into us. Okay, we got it. We got it. Okay, that's good. I kind of want that one too. Let's be really adventurous. Alright, they're coming for us. We're just going to run outside. No rush. Nice. The civilian didn't really bother us and we're still hidden. Alright, so now we can just leave. And go over here. Basically, we loop them around with vision, right? Zheng Jiang shows, they go to this side. And then we can have Hidden Axe capture these two gates right here, and they can start coming in as well. Now, they're going to capture some of the inner courtyard back. That's fine. If you're really patient and want to try no loss, uh, then definitely take your time with this. Uh, but we can also... Ooh, 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 he's going for that one. This is dangerous. Run. We're getting shot at. It's not connecting, which is good, but we're getting shot at. All right, let's take some shots. We're going to go straight for that. I don't know how many shots we're going to take. Maybe a few. Lose some health. Grab this. Grab this. And right, we don't want to fight the spear units. All right, I think we can sneak here now. I don't think they can see us, even at this distance. All right, don't get surrounded. Just got to loop out. And we're going to kill archers, basically. Yep. Wait, why don't we come behind? There we go. Free kill on the archers. After we capture that point, we can have our army march in. Uh, we're getting killed by some arrow towers, but it's fine. We'll take some damage. Oh, we're not capturing? Oh, I thought we captured it already. Okay, we're good. We're good. Now we can set some fire here. Ooh. We've killed them, but we are getting arrow hit. Okay, let's steal them back. Come help. Let's stand in here so they can't capture it back. Ah, uh, that's not good. Okay. So melee evasion. We need this to be our tower. There we go. Took a little bit more damage than I wanted on uh, Zheng Jiang. It's better to keep her healthy because we don't want to recall her because we want to keep that hidden axe on the map. But now we just basically find our chance with these two units here. Kill the archers. Don't run into the braced units and have them move up. Wait, wait, wait. Kill the archers. Uh, don't get surrounded. Run, 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 run. All right, they go charge with them. We can't get out. All right, might as well fight them. All right, and we won. Uh, I think we might have taken one casualty, but that was pretty clean. All right, that was uh, 
pretty clean. We lost one unit on the last charge um, when the Axeman went in. That's fine. We got our infamy. So if we look here when we capture a town, we can do the typical Occupy, which doesn't give you any more infamy. We already got three for winning the fight. You could get three more if you loot and occupy, and you get six more if you sack and withdraw. Now obviously you won't get the settlement this way. Now uh, loot and occupy will give you income, will give you infamy, but you also take out a huge chunk of population, which I don't really care about for Taiyuan because it's an industry town, but we will lower the settlement level, which is something I don't want right now because uh, the buildings inside are quite nice and they are worth money themselves, whether you want to build them up more or demolish them. So we're simply just going to occupy here. The extra three infamy isn't going to change much for us in the early game. Uh, later on, when you're playing Zhengjiang in the mid game, when you have AI over upgrading their settlements, definitely consider using loot and occupy or sack and withdrawal to lower the level to make it easier to manage, as well as get more income and build up your infamy that way. But in the early game right now, we're just going to occupy this first settlement that we have. So that mission completes. Our next mission will be your economy grows. We're not going to be very shy about that. We're going to go for it pretty much right away. We get bonus experience for Zhengjiang for our first settlement here. And we are finally in contact with Zhang Yan. Now, typically, in most play styles, we would want to ask for a trade agreement. Uh, this minus 0.4 is probably the best you can get uh, from him. Uh, even with no loss at this point. Normally with a little bit of loss is minus 0.5. I think if you delegate both fights, it'd be minus one. Uh, I'm not actually interested in setting a trade agreement with him because our game plan is to wipe him out very, very early on in the game. So there's no point to make a deal with him only to break it and hurt our trustworthiness. Uh, the extra money per turn here, 301. You're not going to enjoy it very long if we are going to war right away with him. Now we do have the eunuch item, which I said is a terrible item, but it's worth quite a bit to the AI. So perhaps we can kind of check out what he got as his first turn. Now we don't want any of these weapons, so it's kind of unfortunate. We really can't make a deal with him or else we can definitely use that item to try to negotiate a deal with uh, Zhang Yan. So because of that, we don't have to talk to him at all. We can just end our turn, which is kind of why we not end our turn, but like end our negotiation, which is why I mentioned we don't really have to fight these two fights um, because the way I'm playing is I'm hoping to uh, wipe him out early. So we don't actually need to have an army healthy for negotiations. So at the end of our turn, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these units to save up money for a little bit. We are going to keep Zhengjiang on the field as well as the hidden axe. She did level up because all the experience we fed her. Uh, we're going to take consideration here. Uh, not that it's such a great skill by itself, but it leads directly to her middle skill here, which is Tenacity of Steel, which is typically not a champion skill. She has a unique skill tree. So she gets Tenacity of Steel, which makes her an even better duelist. It's like the best duelist skill on a Sentinel on the best duelist class, the champion. And we also get the Poison Blade a little bit on. So Poison Blade is a target ability. You target enemy generals and you can only use it three times per fight on a 30 second cooldown and it does 10k damage over 15 seconds. So basically two hit of this and you can kill any general you want, almost. You just need to use this ability twice on enemy generals to kill them. Uh, it's a very strong general killer. Zheng Jiang is one of the strongest duelists in the game. Just oppressively strong and she has very nice uh, leadership trait as well i mean it's not as good as commanders uh, but champ for a champion you do end up with reach which helps your movement on the map uh, extra army of your leader flexibility is very key for a, re a redeployment cost discount so she's a decent uh, leader for your faction so definitely consider going down uh, tenacity of steel and then straight away rush for uh, poison blade and then pick up uh, flexibility and reach as well you could also consider going down this route uh, through trust although trust is a little bit wasted so maybe just wait out the turns and go down this route you'd be a little late to get reach probably your last skill uh, but you're fine because early on in the game we're playing super passive here 
Um, we didn't trade away this item, which is kind of sad. And now we have to clean out our roster a little bit. Uh, wait, I didn't, I didn't apply. Okay, there we go. So this character has one small issue with us uh, in that we are actually, uh, there's a rivalry in the faction because of him, um, which creates more satisfaction issues. Not only do we have the 10 points from general discontent because we're playing on legendary, we also have rivalry by passerby. That's the first uh, general we fought. We also have rivalry within the faction. And then we have this faction development event. So that is our infamy bar right here. If we look at our infamy resource, it goes from zero to 500. The tier breaks are not uniform. I believe the first tier break is 50 points. So after 50 points, you're finally out of the inferior infamy tier. This tier, you have minus 10 diplomatic relationship with all factions, which will make your negotiation much harder early on. So trade is pretty much almost a no-go. And you also get minus five satisfaction on all your characters. This is really painful on legendary because you're already getting a minus 10 point uh, debuff. So it's very, very hard to keep your people happy. Uh, you're pretty much going to be stuck on low satisfaction early on, uh, which is another reason why you maybe you should consider trimming your roster. And on the second tier, once we get over 50 points, we get prestige point, which is nice. Our relationship with all other factions deteriorates farther. So we become more infamous for being a bandit. So they're not going to be dealing with us well. But we get extra morale uh, in our fights. We also have a tribute multiplier that we mentioned earlier as well. And we lose that five point of satisfaction. That is the key for this upgrade, actually. You really want to build up your infamy at least to the second tier just to get rid of that sa uh, satisfaction penalty, which is really hard for you to manage your roster of generals. Now going forward, once you hit the third tier, you start having Decay. Uh, decay comes into factor. You have two infamy per turn Decay, which is pretty tough, right? It's going to be pretty tough for you to grow your infamy unless you're constantly fighting. Uh, and constantly fighting is going to be a theme of our playstyle going through the mid game. We're going to try to create situations where it's going to help us to fight a lot so we can build our infamy up higher and higher. Because not only do we get more prestige point, we get more satisfaction now, it's positive satisfaction, we get positive morale, plus 10 morale, and extra tribute in diplomacy. And if we are able to get to dreaded, now the decay is very, very high, minus eight a turn. So you essentially have to win on the average three fights a turn, or a fight and a sacking of a city uh, to uh, cover the per turn loss here. So but you get super, super good benefits. Your units faction-wide will become unbreakable. That is um, at least twice, two time multiplier for how strong your units will be on the field. Because if your units never drop morale and never turn and run, you can get the max out of all your units. It essentially doubles their health pool, maybe even more than double their health pool. So at this tier, you're pretty much unstoppable on the field. And if you're somehow managed to get to a legendary, uh, you're going to get more tribute in diplomacy. Okay, so that's kind of the introduction. So we have a character problem, but because we are trying to rush down Zhang Yan early on, we're not going to get rid of everyone. If we look at our court, uh, we are single and we have an heir who is not related to us. She is just a friend. Uh, and we have... The other general in our army who we're going to use early on we're going to use our heir who is a strategist into our army so the the extra men out are these two guys right here we can use him for assignments because sentinel have the early build assignment so he's the extra man out so we're going to release him from our service and we're going to pop that assignment that we mentioned in supervised construction and we're also going to recall... Uh, we don't have to recall him because he didn't actually get injured that much. We can keep him on the field then. And we can recruit a new general, uh, Lu Zheng, into our army next turn. The construction we're going to do to trigger our your economy grow is going to be demolishing this labor building. Now labor building, eventually we might build one back because it does offer 40% industry. And Taishan 
is Taiyuan. Taiyuan, sorry, not Taishan. Taiyuan commandery over here is the most lucrative commandery in the north. It has two counties, Iron Mine and Toolmaker, which will yield you uh, 500 industry gold each. So that's a thousand industry income. If you add on the state workshop, which is another 500, you're getting a thousand five hundred base industry income. So this labor building, which typically we never build, the 40% becomes 600 extra income per turn. So it becomes quite worth it. Um, so definitely something to consider later on. But right now we don't need this. And instead we're going to save our money and we're going to build the tax collection later. Uh, not only is this a free, early, easy income route, but you get your penalty, pub penalty to public order, which will help you as Zhengjiang. Because if you drive the people insane to negative 100 points, yellow turban rebellions will pop up and you can fight those to farm infamy. Not only are they good sources of experience, gold and items, they're also going to give you three infamy, at least three infamy per rebellion. Because typically you can fight the rebellion off without killing them on the first fight. So you get three infamy and then when they're uh, retreat, you can chase them down for another three infamy. So each rebellion spawn is going to give you at least six points of infamy. And that's going to speed up how fast you can build up your uh, infamy to at least a knowledge. Uh, so this building is extra good and it gives you economic building construction discount of 10 percent so all your purple building going forward your private workshop your state workshop upgrades will all be 10 percent cheaper uh, so it's it's very very nice synergizes very well with her play style so we have that settled we have our army ready and i think that covers everything we have assignments done yep i think we can just go on to next turn all right, so here we are, turn two. We're going to run our army as close to the border as possible. We're going to recruit our second command, Lu Zhong, over here. We're going to get rid of her archer militia first. We're going to re re we're going to recruit these guys back a bit later. So the upkeep is 60 gold, and the cost to recruit is about 180. So it's about a three-turn payoff. If you wait three turn-ish before you recruit, uh, you're not really losing money here. And additionally, our uh, second command here is a rogue. Her background is rogue. So the bonus she gives faction-wide is that all ranged recruit units get starting rank plus two. So if we recruit those same archer militia back, they're going to start out at rank three instead of rank one. So it's much better to get new ones because they're going to be a little better stats on them. And we're going to have them. this army just pretty much close to the border. Zhang Yan's early mission has him running all the way to the uh, lumberyard over here, which is quite far. So this buys us time to pick this off for free. Um, right here at this point, we can start recruiting actually because we don't have any other expenses. We want to rush him down as quickly as possible. What we need is just archers. They're the most cost efficient art thing in the game. Now you might think we just got rid of two. We mentioned the higher level. And also these things are just so cheap. Like we're not gonna run out of money recruiting these guys. And what we want to do with Zheng Jiang though is a little different because she is our, uh, I guess, leader technically. Uh, and also she's a champion. We're gonna get one unit of spear guard uh, to tank up uh, potential enemy uh, archers. And then we're gonna spend however much we can afford on these uh, range units. All right. And actually let's cancel. Hold on, hold on. We want to cancel two of them because we want to trigger the mission so that we can speed up replenish replenishment. Yeah, I think this is a good setup. So our economy is in the tank. Don't worry about it. We're not going to make much money early. What's going to happen is we're going to finish the building next turn, which will fit trigger that your economy grows. And then the next mission is growing might, which requires you to recruit two more units. So what you want here is to save at least two spots for two more recruits to trigger that one, which will speed up your whole army's replenishment so you can attack them sooner. So I think this is perfect. Let's continue to next turn. All right, your economy grow is done. Now we get growing might mission. 
for the extra replenishment and experience what we gotta do is just recruit two more units so just recruit two cheap archers right here and over here we're upgrading the free building so it doesn't really matter and we're done here we can go to the next turn all right this mission is triggered so now we're finally replenishing much faster we're probably gonna have to wait one turn to uh get most unit at least 75 percent there and then we can finally attack our next uh, mission is to have three settlements where we'll get a little extra bonus infamy which is very helpful we're gonna do that we're gonna get the two settlement that giant has and wipe him out so that's kind of our goal here oh we have guajia in the pool okay so we really want him but right now our economy is bad so what we gotta do is we gotta get into more fights uh, to make the money back so over here let's first pick up a reform once again onyx dragon rush probably the best way to go um, another interesting thing you want to do is you probably want to grab these three quite early uh, just because you want level 5 tax collection buildings once you get the small city upgrade. Uh, food is a little bit difficult for Zhengjiang early on, but still very doable. So get this around the mid game. Start out definitely around here. This is probably the best first reform to take. Simply because uh, this leads to uh, the option over here, which is not on the Onyx Dragon Rush, but it's, it's a small deviation. You get a little bit boost to industry, which is very helpful for Taiyuan. And also this unlocks the Toolmaker upgrade, which is one of the specialty counties in Taiyuan. And you can go down here for another 10% in industry and the level 5 Toolmaker. And then these are very interesting reforms where you can only pick one. Once you pick the right side, the left side deactivates. And if you have the left side, the right side deactivate. Uh, this is better in the early game because you can enjoy minus one construction time faction wide for the whole game. And then once you have most command rebuild up, simply switch over to this one for the extra 10% to industry. So this is a very interesting branch that we rarely feature. But you definitely want to end up here uh, pretty early. This is the level four private workshop, so it's also very important. Uh, but you don't want to start here because we don't have trade partners. We have, a, we have one trade route right now that we're not even using. So start out here and then shift over to here and then finish up the onyx dragon so our army is not ready but i kind of want to rush this one maybe next turn because i don't want to lose guojia right we need the thousand gold to get guojia so we're going to wait a turn to recruit him and hopefully he'll still be around so let's continue all right it's the summer season uh year 191 turn five all right, we didn't get anyone else crazy. Oh, we got a Jade Rooster. Okay, so let's dump these items on. So they get a little bit extra stat here. Actually, we can give this book to him. He has more archery units. And she can take authority to help boost satisfaction. And that's pretty much it. Yep. That's all the item. Time to attack. This we can just declare war. This is just the easy delegate right here. You can fight it on the map. You can use your hidden axe. But there's so few units. You just overwhelm them. We get infamy. And here I believe we can just occupy. Alright, we don't have a thousand gold, which kind of sucks. Now let's build this tax collection building up. This is where your food comes from. Early on, if you look at Zhengjiang's faction, this is a tool maker, this is an iron mine, this is a lumber yard. And if you notice, all of these are, except for Zhang Yan's faction right here, are pretty neutral factions, right? You have the High Empire and the standard Yellow Term Rebellion. So you're very safe by expanding this way. No one's going to bother you. Over here is Liu Yu, who is very weak. And he's probably not going to bother you because he's busy with Gong Sun Zan over there. So in this case, this is a very safe development route. So you're going to need food growing here in uh, Ye Yemen over here to be able to supply you the food for the rest of your empire. So this land serving office, you probably need to upgrade it one more time to have the two food needed to supply the small city upgrade here a bit later. Right now, we're just super poor. Uh, but the second we turn on him, he's going to turn his army around to attack us. So we're going to just wait for him to come back. Don't be on the road. 
the trick to fight Zhang Yan's faction is to never have your turn end uh, in just open road. You either want to end your turn encamped, ambushed, or in the city. Because Zhang Yan's faction can trigger ambushes uh, on offense. So it's very dangerous to meet him on the open road. So with that said, let's continue. Okay, so here he comes. Uh, his army is pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit low uh, level. Uh, we have a huge army waiting for him. So he doesn't stand a chance. Especially the fact that we have a town to play around with. So we just got to wait right here and let him come. Uh, it's going to take him two more turns, I think. Maybe he'll reach. No, he's on March. So he's going to probably hit somewhere right here and then attack us next turn. So let's continue. All right, Sun Jian has died. He went a little bit and disappeared. We finally have a thousand gold and Guo Jia has been recruited away. So it's kind of sad. So it's unfortunate that we got a legendary character early that we weren't able to recruit. Uh, perhaps we could have gone a little lighter on the archers. I don't think we needed to go this heavy, um, but uh, it is what it is. We'll have a chance to get more characters later on. Right now, we're just focused on rushing in Zhang Yan to set us up. And that's it. He's somewhere ambushed over here. There's no point to go out. We're just waiting for him to run into us. Let's continue. The Altrian event triggered. It's winter. He's taking his sweet time. He walked like to here and ambushed again. I have no idea what he's waiting for, but the slower he is, the faster he dies. Okay, no one, no one really particularly interesting. We can shift the builder, the uh, assignment here. So we can upgrade this building a little cheaper. And we're just waiting for him to run into us. There we go. He has finally arrived. And we're going to delegate this fight. Because uh, it's tricky to fight such a big army. It's uh, just time consuming too. Because we have to run around this town to kill him off efficiently. Uh, or we can just delegate. And then he's going to lose. Uh, we'll take high casualty. But we're going to be replenishing and he's not. So this is a pretty much a free win here. So let's delegate this fight. All right, we lost over half of our men. He lost over half of his men. And we gain infamy. We'll take extra income. All right, now is not the time to rush him down, right? If we kill him right away, which is definitely doable, he will just recruit a new army here. What we want to do is we want to stall him within our territory where he can't heal. It's actually better for us this way. Let's pick up a new reform. Uh, at this point, I think it's safe to go here. We want to start working towards the small city. We can grab food here. And then save a little money to eventually upgrade this. And we're waiting for one replenishment turn. Uh, what we can do actually is uh, right click him. And then backspace once we overlapped our circle. So now he can't run away. It's kind of the old trick when armies could retreat forever. We have a level up on our assignment, which actually lowers his satisfaction because now he has a desire for higher court position. We're just going to give him scholarship and then intuition to set him up as a potential administrator. Uh, but probably not. We'll probably have some better general to replace him soon. All right, let's continue. All right, and Zhang Yan declare war on the yellow turban. Sure. Uh, we got another item, feather fan. That's actually quite helpful for replenishment. Let's replace this first. We can get that back next turn. Yeah, we're good. We're not actually trying to move. So you see that he can't move. So he decided to go encampment, which is fine. Uh, we just want to trap him here. He's actually not... Yeah, he's suffering through attrition, so he's fine. We just can buy as much time as we want. And let's just continue. Uh, we can actually plan out something. We can move our assignment back to Taiyuan because this is where we want to upgrade the building first. As you can see, our economy is going down... Or not economy, our public order is going down the drain. We have to wrap up the fight before this goes to negative 100 because we want to reset... Uh, with these three commanderies, uh, three counties right here. Uh, so far, so good. Let's continue one more turn and then we can wipe him out afterward. All right, Dong Zhuo has died. Let's finish off Zhang Yan. 
We're gonna just take our army and attack him. Alright, he decided to run a little. So I think in this case we don't actually need to fight him because he ran. Uh, we just ended up on his right side which is good because now we can start heading toward his last piece of land. This army is no longer strong enough to take over the town. Even if he attack us, our defender is going to be capable of running them in circle and killing them. Their general has no health. The arrow tower finishes them in real quick. So we're more interested in taking the last piece of land. Let's continue. Alright, Dong Mian has taken over for Dong Zhuo. Relationship deepens. Xia Hou Yuan. Guo Jia is back. Awesome. I don't really care about Xia Hou Yuan. I really care about Guo Jia. Let's see, who did he join? Oh, he didn't join anyone. He just left the recruitment pool. Perfect. Alright, we got Guo Jia. Very happy about that. And we'll have money very soon. So our air situation with her... She's not a good general, right? Her only bonus is plus two range to all range units. Eventually, just get rid of her, right? Perhaps we can marry Guo Jia or marry whatever um, other character you like. And we can pick up extra bonuses. Because once we get married, we can uh, make them our heir for free if we're, they're within the family. So Guo Jia will give us minus 10 corruption, which is pretty good. But there, there are better ones out there for sure, so def just keep your eye on who you like to add into your faction. She's just very temporary. Uh, she's very good in the beginning of the game, because you do get all these upgraded versions of the Archer Militia. Right? They all started at rank 3, now they're all rank 4. It helps you very much early on. So now we can take this for free. If we had wiped their army out over here, they would have recruited a new army here, which would make this fight a lot more difficult. So this is perfect. So let's continue. All right, Zhang Yan has decided to run into our town. Uh, we can just delegate this fight. Uh, even the AI think we'll win this. All right, the bad news is they got wiped. So that means um, they're gonna have a new army ready for us, but that should be okay. All right, Han Sui declare war on Dong Min. Sure, doesn't really bother us. Not a relevant item. So now we're just going to close in onto this last piece of land that Zhang Yan has. And then we can finally reset. We're waiting to reset our economy. By reset, I mean we're going to fire all our units. And then we're going to get rid of some of these uh, generals as well. And then we're going to recall our general back into Taiyuan. And just station a small army of generals here. Right? And then we're going to trigger rebellions in both of these commanders all the time and farm those with our army right in the middle. And then it will help us build infamy, it will help us build money and experience as we slowly expand out uh, to claim the rest of the north. So that's our plan. We're almost there. Let's continue. And we do have a little bit of extra gold now. And Taiyuan has that assignment in place? No. He's still over here. He's coming back. He has one more turn. Uh, we don't need to build anything here anymore. We're happy to keep this where it is. We actually want to build here. So we want to cancel this guy. We probably should have canceled him a little bit earlier to put him into the Taiwan town so we can upgrade this cheaper. Uh, but that's another time. We didn't know he was going to attack us. Basically that fight. Uh, got us a lot of the gold that we have now because we're not actually growing gold per turn. So let's continue. Alright, Civil War. Uh, Huan Lin is the farmer. Yeah, he's he shows up early for a lot of factions. Uh, farmer is actually quite a good uh, background to have and it's very rare too. If you see him, I would recommend grabbing him. Uh, but for our guide, we're, we don't actually need to go there. We're pretty much done. Uh, grab night battle, it'll help us the most. And fire arrow as well. He did summon a new army as you can see here. He popped three generals in real quick. Uh, if we didn't destroy that army, it would have been more difficult. We're just going to delegate this and his faction is done. And we got Cai Yong. Cai Yong fought us again. He's the general who started turn one uh, opposite of us. Uh, we're just going to release him for the money. 
用不上他们。我有 occupy。不占此城，乃是无礼。All right, and we got our three settlements. We get extra infamy. It's starting to grow a little bit. We're almost at that tier two.、Uh, farming rebellions will definitely help us send any character on assignment. So this will extend our infamy bonus by another three turn. And we get a little bit extra experience. And Zhang Yan is done. We cleaned out Zhang Yan's faction.、Uh, we're gonna put our assignment in. So at this point, if we look at the map again. We have High Empire and Yellow Turbans blanketing our south, Liu Yu to our east, and he's the only potential faction that can declare war on us. And at this point, because we do have、um, the Eunuch, right, so we could negotiate a deal with him, right? We're lucky that he doesn't have a trade deal. We can give him the Eunuch and secure us a trade deal, and maybe a non-aggression pact. Okay, that's gonna cost him too much. So maybe ask him for a little bit of money back in return, just a little bit. All right, this deal would also decrease the likelihood of him declaring war on you, but it's not like he's a strong faction either, so we don't really have to worry about him. So at this point, you made it. The early game is done for you. You see, you have extremely bad、uh, public order issue in these two、uh, commandery. So. A yellow turban rebellion is gonna pop up in them, and you are pretty much set to fix that. So all you gotta do at this point is get rid of your men who served you well, so your economy can finally bounce back. Your generals are injured from all the delegate we done, so we're gonna recall them to heal.、Uh, this guy is the source of some of our rivalry in our faction. As we get new generals, we can definitely replace these generic ones. Uh, so right now we can still use him,、um, probably as a potential、uh, administrator. He actually has、uh, this trait right here that gives two food if he's a administrator, which is quite useful early on, given that we don't have many food pr production. So we could still keep him. I、uh, just gotta recall him, and we can finally get rid of this elite unit. It's still a little too pricey for the early game. Uh, but as you can tell, because he acts kind of like a ninja, you can actually sneak a lot of easy wins, especially in higher level settlements. So, if, for example, we're fighting all these towns that doesn't have、uh, a, a capture the flag point in the middle that wins you the whole settlement. But let's say if we're fighting a city or a small city or higher with walls, you can just have your main force visible on one side of the wall. Have your hidden act climb over on the other side, sneak into the town center, kill off the one unit, usually a spear unit they keep there, and capture the point. And they can open gates、uh, once they're inside as well. They're just very、uh, flexible units, so definitely utilize them in your game. But early on, we're only attacking you know all these counties with high empire. We don't need them. We can go a more standard way. All right, so we recalled everyone. We're pretty much set up for our early game. The assignment will be ready next turn, and we can finally upgrade this town、uh, to a large town to a small city. And then once this is small city, we're gonna try to upgrade this all the way to level five, which will also、uh, make the、uh, economic building discount even higher. And then we're gonna do that for both of these commanderies. And then we're gonna station Zhengjiang's army right here with a few group of generals, like say Guo Jia, whoever you get in your game, and just gonna hunt down yellow turban rebellions that come out of both of these counties. And you're gonna build up your infamy nice and all the way to about here, where you're basically between a knowledge and renowned, and where you start getting decay. And once you feel comfortable, start expanding.、Uh, perhaps in the beginning, expand to the south a bit. Because Taiyuan Toolmaker is a nice choke point and very self-defensible, so this county, once you get a couple levels in it, has a very decent map. It's a circular map similar to a town, and you get、uh, swordsmen and cavalry, so you can definitely loop the enemy around forever.、Uh, and they have very small, weak factions over here.、Uh, the fishing port and the Xihe、uh, County over here is not that great. I prefer to keep them neutral. 
Because once you capture these, you come into direct contact with Dong Zhuo's forces over here, and Dong Zhuo really likes to sail up the river to attack you. So this could be a potential disaster if you go for it. It's kind of like the Bohai fishing port when you play Gong Sun Zan. It feels like this is your first source of food, but it's really a very hard to defend trap. Uh, it's more important to get Tai Yuan up to speed by taking the iron mine and tool maker. This is a big money maker for you and you don't need population to do this. So you can build up your industry income while sacking your public order with no penalties. And then you want to expand out over here. And you definitely want to conquer the north, right? Once you have firm control of the north side, you can go down to the river as a natural boundary and then expand west. You're very flexible at that point. You're playing pretty much uh, just like a regular faction after that point. But in the beginning, this is when we go back to a passive playthrough. A lot of our guide, we start out super passive and build up. Zhengjiang plays a little different. We clean up any potential threat by wiping out Zhang Yan right away. And then we go back to a passive buildup and then we expand out afterward. Because right now, as you can see, we're very, very safe. And we can uh, build up our infamy with farming rebellions. So that's our guide. Hope you guys enjoyed this and see you next time. Bye.